overnight. In Milwaukee, Officer Tao Heard died after being struck by a speeding driver who ran a red light around 1.30 a.m. Her had just ended his shift. That suspect in custody. Police in Racine looking for the suspect who shot and killed Officer John Hetland after Hetland attempted to stop an armed robbery Monday night. Attorney General Josh Call says a new Trump administration rule allowing doctors and nurses to deny care based on religious or personal beliefs puts patients at risk. Somebody who needs emergency care, for example, would have to risk potentially going to multiple different hospitals. Wisconsin's joined a group of states in fighting that new rule. Governor Tony Evers says his plan for a gas tax increase to fund road projects would have made more sense than the vehicle registration fee increases included in the Republican budget. Like us on Facebook. Follow us on Twitter. Wisconsin Radio Network. Calling to order the fellowship of the one that got away. We've got a new member with us today, my son, Kevin. Well, I'd been trying to reel in this huge fish for like 10 minutes. I finally got her right up next to the boat. But the net guy, my dad, was just too slow. Isn't it time you became part of the group? To find out where to get your fishing license today, go to dnr.wi.gov and search Go Wild. We are the boy band. Your tween made you see. We are the boy band. It's painful concert number three. We are the boy band. We're five and nineteen. We are the boy band. Always singing on key. You love your kids enough to take them to see their favorite uh, band. Love them enough to make sure they're buckled up in the back seat. Show them you love them. Keep them safe. Visit NHTSA.gov slash the right seat. Brought to you by the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration and the Ad Council. Just four spots remaining for the WBEV, WXRO, and Travel Leaders Adventure in Ireland. Eight sensational days in September of this year. This is a totally customized tour. So whether you've been there before or if this is your first trip to the Emerald Isle, you'll be taking in the natural beauty, the history, the culture of Ireland in comfortable September temperatures. For more information on our September 2019 trip to Ireland, visit our website, dailydodge.com, and click on WBEV, WXRO Trips. Sunday, June 30th is your shot at $500. Sing your heart out for the one-day karaoke contest in the party yard at the Thirsty Beaver. Registration from noon until 1, and the contest goes until 4 p.m. This is a fan-voted contest, no judges, just you and the crowd. So bring all your friends to cheer you on. You must be 21 to compete. For all of the details, visit the contest page at dailydodge.com, brought to you by Hometown Glass and Improvement. Don't miss karaoke at the Thirsty Beaver Sunday, June 30th, where a singing beaver is a happy beaver. Think with a drink, WBEV WXRO Traveling Trivia wraps up Thursday, June 20th at the Children's Radiothon Bash at Bayside. Haven't been following our trivia contest? Don't worry. There will be tons of silent auction baskets, drink specials, bingo with cash payouts, food specials, and more. Come to Bayside to join in on all the fun Thursday, June 20th. Bingo at 4 p.m., trivia registration at 5.30. Must be 21 to play trivia. Think with a drink is brought to you by the Boathouse, Moore's Bar, the Hitching Post, Rock River Tap, the Thirsty Beaver, and Bayside Supper Club. The next WBEV WXRO broadcast will be Thursday, June 20th from 11 until 2 behind American Bank in Beaver Dam. Part of the 2019 Children's Radiothon. Come and get a Pernat Premium Brat, popcorn, and a soda for just $2. Then join us Tuesday, June 25th at Kirschbaum Strawberry Acres. But first, it's a brat, popcorn, and a soda for $2 behind American Bank in Beaver Dam. Friday, June 20th. For a full WBEV WXRO broadcast schedule, visit DailyDodge.com. For the latest local news online anytime for free, log on to DailyDodge.com. Brought to you by Vita Park Eye Associates, an American bank. Here's a look at your weatherology forecast. We'll see a few scattered showers and thunderstorms here this afternoon with mostly cloudy sky conditions and a high around 70. Winds out of the west around 5 to 10 miles per hour. Tonight, a slight chance for showers and thunderstorms, mostly cloudy skies, a low near 55, and west winds around 5 to 10. By Wednesday, a slight chance for showers and thunderstorms, cloudy skies, a high of 65. I'm meteorologist Jennifer Wojcicki on your hometown station, AM 1430 WBEV. Currently, it's 74. Come enjoy the Tony Award-winning Broadway musical Newsies at the Beaver Dam Area Community Theater. This summer's high school age musical brought over 60 talented students from 14 area high schools together to bring the rousing tale of Jack Kelly set in turn-of-the-century New York City to life. 
This Broadway musical is based on the 1992 motion picture and inspired by the true story of the Newsboy Strike. Take a trip back in time and tap your toes along to the show-stopping musical numbers. Show dates are June 20th, 22nd, 27th, and 29th at 7.30 p.m. Matinee performance on Sunday, June 23rd and 30th at 2 p.m. Tickets can be purchased online at BDACT.org or at ReachX Food Pride or at the BDACT Fine Arts Center on Tuesday and Thursday from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. Student Rush tickets may be purchased for $8, 30 minutes before the show begins. Come watch this extremely talented group of young actors as they sing and dance the night away. Newsies at the Beaver Dam Area Community Theater. 1238 from AM 1430 WBEV, streaming online at DailyDodge.com. It is time now for today's community comment. Here's your host, Craig Warmbold. Well, thank you very much. And community comment is broadcasting live from the Daily Dodge studios here in Beaver Dam. We are video streaming today's program as we've got some uh, visual uh, components to our uh, to our conversation today, at least in this first segment, uh, when we have an opportunity to do one of my favorite things, which I don't get to do very often here on community comment, and that's talk music. Uh, so we invite you to go over to the video tab at dailydodge.com and you can check out the live video stream right now uh, if you're listening over on AM 1430 WBEV or even if you're listening on the audio stream on dailydodge.com. You can kick over to the video tab if you want. Uh, you can watch this now or you can watch it uh, podcasted uh, a little bit later uh, after the uh, the program ends. I uh, want to introduce our uh, our guest on the uh, on, again on this first segment of the program today. Uh, he is a gentleman that you might be uh, somewhat familiar with. He's uh, he's got a, a radio connection, uh, but a uh, a doctor's title and a much uh, higher salary than most radio people. Uh, he is a uh, eye doctor in the uh, city of uh, Beaver Dam and Waupun, and we've got a couple locations actually. Uh, but he's also got a a rich history of um, of well making music back uh, back in the uh, 60s. Uh, Tom Castillo here in the studio with us. Tom, thank you very much for joining us today. Hi, Craig. Thank you for having me. So uh, we've, uh, uh, before we get into your, your 60s rock and roll history, uh, for our listeners that may not be familiar, they probably hear you once a month on the, what is it, the Talking Eye Doctor show. Yeah, it's, uh, what, we, what we call it, I think sometimes we'll call it seeing is believing mm -hmm. or the eyes have it. Uh, it just depends. Uh, John Moser never could come up with a, an idea of exactly what to uh, to call the show. but uh, I remember it was These Eyes at one point, and, and you had to sing the whole thing. Uh, verse of the song from uh, them was yeah, it? Was it Guess Who? Guess Who, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, these, these eyes, eyes and do, 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 do. right, right, yeah. That's and why he's the musician. Well, you know, I just um, yeah, I was you know, if you're old enough, you get to remember all the songs <laughs> when they first came out. Mm -hmm. You know, the originals. And I caught the reruns myself. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, yeah, with uh, with Jay, Dr. Wilkins, and I, we we do the uh, show. Actually, we'll be on tomorrow mm. at uh, eleven ten until uh, twelve o'clock uh, for our uh, usual show might as well put a plug in for that while we're at it might right? as might as well, well yeah. that's great yeah but dr wilkins and i have been uh having a lot of fun with that radio show giving great. people educating them regarding the eyes and uh, and then of course we get a chance to do our christmas uh, carol every uh year yeah that's not your only connection to radio the 1110 show here on uh, am 1430 wbev for uh, yeah i was just i was actually just at the uh eye doctor uh mm -hmm. visiting uh, dr hendrix and uh, mm -hmm. uh walked by your wall of fame in the uh, in this office there in uh, Beaver Day, I, I must not have gone down that hall before. It's a very prominent. It's right there in the center of everything too. I don't know mm -hmm. how I missed it. Mm -hmm. You've got all of the Wisconsin, not unlike you've got here, the Wisconsin Broadcasters Association awards, uh, but uh, a couple eye doctors picked up more. Well, pr I think more than most people in this building. Well, we've got we. Uh, I, I can remember the first time we did that. It was just kind of strange, you know, because we were just trying to say, "Hey, Merry Christmas, everyone," you know, and. Uh, and then we were told, well, you got 30 seconds. We said, well, play a Christmas <laughs> carol. And then uh, and, uh, Christina Thaliker at the, at the time, uh, she uh, said, well, why don't you do, you know, do you see what I see? And we said, well, maybe it should be, can't you see what I see? And after that, Dr. <laughs> Wilkins and I started writing songs like crazy. And, uh, and then you guys submitted it for an award, and we won. And we're kind of like, okay. And then everybody starts going, oh, so what are you going to do for next year? <laughs> and so, you know, the pressure was on to, to write more songs. So uh, we we did and uh, and uh, well you know heck you know what you're a three-time winner for the uh, station of the year four times 
four time. Right? Four time. I'm sorry. Patron of the year. Well, <laughs> yeah, well, I'm sorry. Yeah, it was the, the girls basketball team was only three times. Yeah, so currently. currently. Currently, yeah. Next right. year they'll be four times, right? <laughs> right. Uh huh. But that's yeah. Wow, so station of the year. And, and you say that, and, you know, it's no joking matter. All those uh, uh, awards are, are weighted, basically. And uh, if it wasn't for the singing IDOCs, tried and true, coming through, winning the, uh, the WBA in the category of uh, traditionally had been best client recorded commercial. Uh, if it wasn't for those points, we would not have gotten that station of the year award. So, I mean, it, it really kind of takes all, uh, you know, parts of the building and uh, really everybody from our, our partners to our fans to really be able to pr uh, pull something like that off. So thank you guys for, uh, oh, for that. Craig. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but, you know, <laughs> this, this goes to show your, your kind of, uh, you know, musical leanings. And you had a pretty strong foundation in music. I was surprised to find out a couple months ago we were chatting and you started to tell me, well, basically about what we're here to talk about today. So let's take it from the top, if you will, Doctor. Okay. Um, from the top, from if you top. will. From. From the yeah. top. That was the name of our band uh, back <laughs> in the 60s. You know, it's, it's kind of like, you know, okay, so what are we going to call ourselves? And we went through some transitions. Uh, you know, we had called ourselves the Corsairs, and then the Premonitions, and then we became From. And we, you know, it's just from, from, right. Just from R O M all caps. Anyway, all so caps. Yeah, all caps. It's got to be all caps. Okay. Otherwise, you know, you don't want it just to, you know, be, you know, F R O M, like <laughs> little, you know, but anyway, um, I mean, you know, you want to, you know, well, it's better than, you know, trying to come up with some other weird names, but the thing is that, yeah, so we decided that and then actually it, it, it was kind of effective, you know, because we expected people to go, you know, from what, from who, from where. And uh, Art Roberts was a uh, disc jockey with uh, WLS in Chicago. And uh, when he introduced us uh, at, um, at the uh, International Battle of the Bands at Navy Pier, you know, he did exactly that, you know. So it was kind of like, okay, it worked. But, you know, we were kind of like, okay, well, they got the who and, you know, you know single name type stuff. And we want to make it easy for people to remember instead of some long super califragilist or something. <laughs> but you're not the from. Not the from. Th from. Who is from? Okay, from is Michael Blaine. Uh, Mike Blaine and I actually met uh, when we were uh, just before we turned five in kindergarten. Oh. So, you know, we've been uh, good friends here for the, uh, the past 60, uh, almost 65 years here. And uh, uh, Michael Blaine played uh, bass guitar. And uh, then uh, Tommy Glover. Uh, is uh, was our drummer, and uh, he he kind of came to our same elementary school, and then uh, and so he was our drummer, and then uh, Michael Blaine and uh, Bruce Baltus uh, met in high school at Lane Tech, oh. and uh, and the uh, and so uh, he was our, our lead guitarist. Lane Tech is kind of famous too for for music because that's where the Shadows of Night mm. were from. They played Gloria. You know, it was a big the big original the original Gloria. Well, sure. the original Gloria was actually by them. By them. Yeah. Mm -hmm, but uh, it was a big hit in the United States uh, by Shadows of Night. And between Van Morrison and them, yes. there was Shadows of Night. And I know Lane Tech. I'm very familiar with Lane Tech. I was supposed to go to Lane Tech, and I wound up uh, going to St. Patrick High School. You went to? You grew up in Chicago. I grew up in Chicago. So I you went, went to, to Lane too? No, I went to DePaul Academy. Oh, DePaul, wow. DePaul University Academy. So I went there. Um, and um, and so the other guys were going to Lane or Lakeview High School was the other one that was uh, in our in our school district. Yeah, I, I wanted to go to Lane because it was a co-ed high school, and somehow I went go wound up going to an all boys. High. That's a whole different story. I'm not really sure how that played out. There were far less girls at my school than there were at Lane Tech, and I, I still don't. I scratch my head when I look back. I understand what you're saying. <laughs> actually, Lane Tech actually did become co-ed later on because it was oh, all it was boys all at boys one time. At it was that all time, boys, wasn't it? Yes, yeah. exactly. It was all boys sure. at one time, and then became co-ed. Uh, and I ended up going to an all boys school too. So the Paul Academy mm -hmm. was all boys. Uh, yeah, Immaculata um, was a was a uh, girl school that was. Uh, my sister went to Immaculata Catholic school. Not familiar so with that one. Yeah, that's right up on Lakeshore Drive and okay. uh, or Sheridan Road. Up. So uh, you grew up in the city. I grew up right in the city. Right yeah, in three the heart blocks of the city. from three blocks from Wrigley Field. Wow. Okay. So you're in Wrigleyville neighborhood and, that, and everything yeah, that's like that. That's what they call it now. Yeah. Right? yeah. I was in was too like far like down Addison. Well, mm -hmm. you know, I was down at Montrose actually. You were so. in Montrose. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, down I didn't about know you didn't yeah. grow up there. Yeah. 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 Well, a small world. Well, we're, we're not going to bore our listeners with oh, no, our no, Chicago no, no, roots talk anymore. Uh, you guys basically all met in school. Yeah. We you met decide in to uh, form this band from. 
Uh-huh. Uh, and uh, w- w- what are your goals? What are your intentions? Are you are you hoping to hit it big? Are you just hoping to play some uh, some parties and have yeah. a good time? Or are you just hoping to jam in a basement? We were a cover band, so and yeah, we jammed in the basement a lot. You know, matter of fact, you know, if you've ever seen that movie, that thing you do, the Tom Hanks sure. one, yeah, 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 exactly. I, you know, I think he must have been hanging out in our basement and <laughs> taking notes or something <laughs> like that because it really was kind of interesting because some of the instruments that they had uh, were the instruments that we had early yeah. on. So when you looked at that, uh, you know, uh, you know, I had I started out with a silver tone guitar mm. and a silver tone amplifier. Matter of fact, my very first guitar had was the ampl- electric guitar had a uh, the um, amplifier built into the guitar case. Wow. So you know, and, and so that was we did that, and then later on we got these nice little, uh, you know, head, you know, had a standalone. Yeah, type. exactly, and it had the uh, the head on it, and then a and two, cab. two twelve inch. Uh, speakers Ooh, two by twelves. Mm-hmm. Wow, you were really right to rock well, out we the moved, stages, that's weren't you? We were, moving, we were moving up there a little <laughs> bit now. So uh, you know, and that was it. And uh, and then uh, you know, we had uh, uh, Bruce had uh, what did he have? Well, anyway, he had his uh, Fender Strat and a Gretsch amplifier, and uh, you know, this Gretsch uh, Maestro fuzz box, which is the same fuzz box that they used for satisfaction. Oh wow. You know, so it was the same kind of a sound that we, you know, we were kind of getting on our on our original stuff, but most of the stuff, you know, and and so I've been digging around into the basement of my my uh, house here ever since this stuff, you know, came about and I was and I found our set lists. And we'll tell you about the stuff that came about in just a yeah, second. Yeah, but the set list, I mean, you know, we were doing stuff like you ain't heard nothing yet and too much to dream. So that was the Blues Magoos and uh, Electric Prunes. She was one of the monkey songs. Hey Joe, um, Hendrix. Hendrix. I see the light. Shapes of things. Those were uh, you know the uh, Yardbirds. Uh, Paul Revere and the Raiders. Uh, you know we had a whole bunch of stuff. Louie Louie, uh, Twist and Shout, and some Glad All Over. That was Dave Clark. Glad right? All Over. Yeah, they yeah, were recently so inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in the last couple of years, mm-hmm. along with many of the uh, the artists that you uh, just referenced. Because you were really, I mean, talking about the guitar rock age, you you really came up right in that. And you played rhythm guitar. I played rhythm guitar, and 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 I was writing songs back mm-hmm. then. So you were the you were the songwriter. I was the songwriter. Uh, and how many originals does From have? Well, you know, I, as I was saying, I've been digging around in my basement and finding stuff up, uh, and so I've got a box of stuff here. I've you know from the song list here, I just saw another one that that I had written, and uh, but we didn't record. You know, so the only two that we ever recorded uh, were. Uh, you know, it was a 45, so we wrote, recorded, uh, you know, these singles. Basically, you know, back then you got these 45 RPMs. They had a single, you know, just like if you go on iTunes and you and you buy a single. Uh, well, we, we recorded that, and, you know, we made 100 copies. It was on our own label, and, you know, and basically, uh, I mean, we sold them for like a buck or something like that. And, uh, you recovered know, your costs. Covered our costs, exactly. You know, we spent about... I, I remember we went into the, the recording studio one night and we spent about three hours there, you know, or something like that, you know, because we're paying by the hour. Sure. These engineers are not cheap. You know, uh, I don't know what it would cost in today's dollars, but, you know, either way, it was, you know, we spent uh, a good amount of time there. Do you remember what the price tag was for that three hours? No, I don't. Okay. I was, you know, I should look up, <laughs> see if I still have the receipt. Um, I, I don't throw anything away. But anyway, uh, you know, it's just so. Uh, but we spent this this time down there, and and so we recorded the two uh, songs, and and again on these uh, recordings there, you know, you just uh, we did um, two tracks basically, and they were single, uh, you know, the single track uh, recordings. So we had the music on one track, and then we did the vocals uh, mixed into the to the second track. Sure, and that was. Yeah. Uh, how we ended up mono recording. recording. Those. They're mono recordings. Mm-hmm. Yeah, these, so these were 1966. Now, are, are these the ones that you have here? Or uh, we, we've got, for the benefit of those watching the video stream, you, mm. you do have a 45 here. Is, this is not the one that was self produced, though. Mm, yes, it is. This is the one that was yeah, self-produced. Yeah, but, the, but okay. well, what, what you're seeing here, let me show you something. Yeah, show, hold it up to the camera okay. here so that so, folks can so what zoom happened, in and see What this. happened is that uh, last year uh, we had. Um, my uh, our bass guitarist Mike Michael Blaine ended up meeting uh, a guy that said, you know, gee, you know, I know someone who is interested in in 60s music and heard our record and wanted to re-release it. So uh, this uh, record now has re- been re-released on um, Alona's Dreams Records, but uh, you know they he wanted to make it as close to the original as possible. So, uh, you know, uh, let me 
let me grab this thing. I, I want to show you this. You're listening to Community Comment and watching Community Comment here on AM 1430 WBEV streaming at dailydodge.com. Oh, this is this is the real real thing here now. Yeah, this is the real thing. So let me turn this up. This there way. you go. All right, so what, what we have here, Tommy Glover, our drummer, all right, he's the one that put this together for us, and, and I'm thanking him. Uh, and so he took the original uh, from the uh, reissue. Uh, he's put the, um, the back and the front covers of the uh, reissue, and then the reissued um, uh, 45. So, you know, if you have a, a record uh, turntable, you know, you could actually play this on the turntable now. And then they also had some inserts there that had some pictures of us from back in the 60s. And then there's a little one down here of a picture of us in uh, recent. And then a little bit of story about uh, our, our band and some of the stuff we've just been talking about. And then the uh, certificate that we did when we won uh, a contest at the uh, International Battle of the Bands in Chicago's Navy Pier. So 1967? 1967. Yeah, so I mean, you know, we were talking 50 years later, and so yeah, I, I'll be honest with you, uh, I've never thought too much. I'm going to put this down. Sure. I never thought too much about this about this record. You know, it was kind of like was think too much about it. No, I mean, it was just okay, fine. You know, I did. It, we had some fun. You know, and that's really about the whole thing about it, fun. But you still play music, so I, I mean, you. This was the foundation of your love for music. Oh yeah. So you yeah. play. You, you play a little bass guitar. You play a little uh, guitar. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been playing bass guitar a lot at, at church. Okay. You know, because they needed. Uh, actually, I picked that up about twenty years ago because right. the uh, when we were living in Kentucky, we started a praise band with the, the kids, a okay. youth praise band, and they didn't have a bass guitarist, so I said, okay, well, I could do that. <laughs> so I went and bought a bass guitar and an amp and said, okay, fine. But I mean, really, the I have to thank my parents for the love of music because uh, my dad played guitar and uh, and my grandfather, he played mandolin. Oh, I, wow. I never met him, he, uh, but uh, my, my mom blood. told me, yeah, it's in the blood. And um, and my brother and I always kind of argued about who was the one that broke my dad's guitar. <laughs> yeah, he says he did it. I said I did it. So either <laughs> way, one of us unfortunately uh, broke his acoustic. Um, that's how you learned. But that's how on we dad's learned. guitar. Da dad's guitar started with that, and then switched over. My parents, actually, the very first instrument I ever played was the accordion. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. So I had accordion and then some piano. You learned sheet music. Mm -hmm. You learned how to read music. Well, yeah, I'm not really a good sight reader, okay. so but but I play really well by ear. So you know, if I can listen to something, I can kind of pick up uh -huh. on it. And so um, so we we played that, and then later on when we were had our band together too, it was kind of like well. Um, you know, let's. Uh, you know, we could really use an organ. That would be really kind of cool if we had an organ. And it, it was kind of like, well, you know, if we get an organ, that means then we're going to have five guys. We got to split the money five ways. <laughs> I could play the organ. So, uh, <laughs> so I went out and bought this Vox Continental organ. Now that's the organ. Man, I got to show you this pictures here. So I got some pictures. These are modern pictures, if these I'm not are, mistaken. These are modern pictures um, of the instruments that we played, and. There it is. So these are the instruments that we had. Um, and I had this uh, Vox Continental organ and then the Rickenbacker. And these are both the originals uh, that we had. So I mean, wow. these, these things are 50 years old. And then the uh, Hofner bass is what Michael was playing. And uh, that's a reissue. And then this is also a reissue of the uh, the Fender Stat Stratocaster that uh, Bruce played. 62? Yeah, yeah, 60, uh, 61. Is early 60s, yeah. Early 60s. Yeah, early 60s. And, uh, you know, there was a transition that was going on with Fender. Fender got bought by uh, uh, CBS uh, Columbia. And um, so there were some changes that were made that th when they bought it from Fender, from Leo Fender. But uh, Tommy played, uh, I wish I could see these were Ludwig drums, but they're not. But uh, he played these uh, Ludwig drums uh, and, so he, and Zildjian cymbals. And, um, so you got, the, you got the instrumentation back, and uh -huh. you're, you're getting the band back together because of this reissue, essentially. We, yeah, well, you know, it's, yeah, I wish I could say that we're pl all playing together, because Tommy lives out in, in, um, in um, California. He lives in Los Angeles, North Hollywood. And, um, but uh, when we had this uh, re-release party, so you know they uh, they said okay we want to do this and so they created that reissue of of the original record and then we had a re-release party here a re-release party I guess of uh, in March second uh, and of this year of this year 
and Tommy Glover ended up showing up, and and so here's here's the four of us there taking a little picture of uh, Tom, Tom E. Glover, and Michael Blaine down there, and me up on top of Michael Blaine, and and Bruce off to the side there. So this was held at the Electric Jungle. If you ever want, if you're interested in, um, use uh, of uh, vinyl you know, uh, albums and 45s and stuff. The Electric Jungle in Chicago, it's up in Rogers Park area of Chicago, uh, definitely a, a, a place to go uh, and, and just search out if you're really looking to find uh, some uh, vinyl and stuff. So, you know, here here we are with, uh, uh, so Chris is uh, from Alona's Dreams Records, and uh, he's down there in the bottom there with us holding our copies of the uh, of the reissue of these, uh, of these records. So we were kind of... Um, having fun with that so you don't play for this uh for this record re-release no party, we didn't but play you guys get back together but we got back to were, were the old feelings there were you guys uh happy to see each other were, i have all the, the problems of, of, of being in a band uh, i haven't come up? seen tommy glovers for almost like 40 years wow there were 50 years really and uh because he moved out to california but uh, Michael and Bruce and I usually would get together to celebrate our birthdays. They're all in February. So we would get together, you know, usually uh, try to get together every year to, you know, get together and say, you know, happy birthday to each other. But um, but that was, uh, that's what, uh, you know, that got us all together again. But what's kind of interesting, there's a couple of things here. I'll show you a little pictures here. This is uh, uh, Bruce and Michael. And this is over at the Navy Pier. Wow. This, we were at the Montgomery Ward uh, stage <laughs> at this uh, Battle of the Bands, the International Battle of the Bands, and uh, and Tommy's back there behind in, in the drums. You can kind of make him out a little bit on this on this photo there, in the uh, playing in the back of the drums there, and you can see me. And that was not my organ, but somebody else. Uh, they had you know they had their sound systems and stuff that were set up, so we were playing there. This is how the uh, Navy Pier looked. It was actually a pier. You know that's where they would par uh, park a lot of the the ships for. Um, you know, uh, merchandise or whatever it is that they would bring in along the uh, the waterway there from, uh, you know, the um, uh, Great Lakes mm -hmm. and uh, uh, the um, what is that St. Lawrence Seaway sure. and stuff Looks like that. Looks a little different nowadays. Oh yeah, it is. Uh -huh. Actually, you <laughs> everybody know, everybody does. <laughs> you know, Navy Pier was actually the very first site of the University of Illinois Chicago campus uh. before they moved it over to you know where it is over there on the, uh, the uh, west side of mm -hmm. Chicago near the west side. But, uh, so you guys get together, 1967, you played the International Battle of the Bands at Navy Pier. How'd you guys do? We came in fifth wow. for the day. There were 250 bands. We came in fifth for the day, so I can't tell. I wish I could say we could did fifth out of 250, but, you know, that's okay. Either way, fifth th for the day. So we did really well, and, you know, this kind of shows there we are. 1967, International Battle of the Bands, Navy Pier, Chicago, Illinois. So we had some fun with that. I think the reason, you know, uh, what they did, the way you made money back then is, you know, is little bands are uh, battle of the bands. Sure. So there were always battle of the bands. There were, all, you know, uh, and you know, so people would, you know, come and do that. And then if you won, you got paid. All right. <laughs> and I have to say, for every of the battle of the bands that that we, you know, played in, you know, in the local area, we did get paid every time. Wow. And so, you know, and you know, sometimes you throw in, you get a trophy. So we got this trophy here. That one, I think, was from when we played at St. Alphonsus. So we still had that trophy. 1967, there. first place. I could vouch for that for our radio listeners. Uh, uh, th that's a big trophy to be getting for playing music. Yeah, it was. You know, and, and you know, it was just kind of kind of a lot of fun. But then, you know, like I said, you know, we wrote our own stuff, and but we did a lot of covers. And, and, and cover bands, I mean, that's not unusual. I mean, the Rolling Stones did a yeah, lot of covers. Sure. The Beatles did a lot of covers. Yeah. I got to give a lot of credit to the, you know, the British Invasion, mm. all right, because I know when I was learning guitar, I, you know, it was kind of like, okay, fine, you know, and then the Beatles come around, and it's kind of like, wow, I want to play that. And then our, our music, you know, was kind of influenced a lot, too. Uh, you know, by the Kinks mm -hmm. and uh, you know, and some of the you know Dave Clark Five and Beatles and and so and and the uh, Rolling Stones. So that all of that stuff uh, helped. You know, Hermits Hermits. But you're more than a cover band. You're you have a couple of You've got several originals. Two of which essentially you've solidified into a single with a, a front side and a B side and a side and a B side. Yeah. Uh, and and that's what is uh, attractive to collectors now. It's that original music. I want to talk about that, but I, I think we're really overdue for a break here. So why don't we take that break, and we'll come back, and we'll pick it up there. We may even hear I, – I know we've got some of the music queued up that we're going to be talking about that's actually uh, this original music that's on the single. And this is the stuff that 
the collectors look for? What they look for that original music. I mean, uh, mm -hmm. cover bands are, uh, you know, are, that that's a great time in your history. But I'm sure when uh, Alonis Dream Records came around, they wanted the originals, right? Yes, they did. Yeah, we're going to talk about those originals, maybe a little bit more about being in that studio for three hours and what it means to you here, uh, a few few decades out. Uh, when we return here on Community Comment, our guest is Tom Castillo. You might know him as Dr. Tom Castillo of Vita Park Eye Associates, but in the 60s, 1967, he was the uh, songwriter and rhythm guitarist from From. <laughs> we'll be back here in just a few minutes from the Daily Dodge uh, uh, studios uh, here on AM 1430 WBEV and streaming at dailydodge.com. Just a few minutes. WBEV Beaver Dam streaming live at Daily Dodge brought to you by Beaver Dam Piggly Wiggly. Time for new tires? Pull into the quick lane service at Countryside Ford in Columbus. No appointment necessary. Get the price match guarantee. Countryside Ford, 330 Transit Road in Columbus. Golfers, help raise $4,500 for the Children's Radiothon. How? Just Golf Box Lake Golf Club, Wednesday, June 19th, anytime from 6A to 8B. And the price is crazy. 18 holes of the cart for only $25. And from that, a $15 green fee will be donated to the Children's Radiothon. If all tee times are filled, that's $4,500 for the kids of Dodge County, plus great food and drink specials and even radio celebrities. Call Fox Lake Golf Club for tee times at 920-928-2508. The Bakers at Village Hearth are proud to introduce the latest addition to their Artisan Hearth brand family of products. Artisan Hearth Rustic Country White Bread. Thickly sliced and lightly dusted with flour, this gourmet loaf has been carefully crafted to deliver the homemade taste and slightly chewy texture your family will love. Try Artisan Hearth Country Rustic White Bread. Toasted or untoasted, it's the perfect complement to your favorite sandwiches. Artisan Hearth, baked fresh locally. Our team keeps your team in the game. Care that's close to home. For knees, hips, shoulders, we have you covered. Diagnosis to treatment, therapy to recovery. We are here for you and your family, getting you back in the game and life. Agnesian Bone and Joint Health. 18 providers, six locations to serve you. 920-926-8616. Tune in to AM 1430 WBEV for coverage of the Milwaukee baseball game this Sunday and listen for the Columbus Family Dental Mystery Player of the Game. Listen to the WBEV Morning Show the following Monday and be the correct number caller when we ask who was the Columbus Family Dental Mystery Player of the Game. Get it right and you will win two tickets to a Milwaukee baseball game. Be sure to listen to WBEV this Sunday for the Milwaukee Baseball Mystery Player of the Game brought to you by Columbus Family Dental. Why do patients choose Columbus Community Hospital's Prairie Ridge Center for Orthopedic Excellence for joint replacement surgery? Improved quality of life. I had extreme knee pain because it was bone on bone. The surgery at Prairie Ridge was quick, it was efficient. Thanks to Prairie Ridge, I have no pain at all and I've reclaimed my life. Columbus Community Hospital and Prairie Ridge Health Clinic offers a five-star, top-performing, high-quality program that will help you reclaim your life. Now also serving in Marshall. Come enjoy the Tony Award-winning Broadway musical Newsies at the Beaver Dam Area Community Theater. This summer's high school age musical brought over 60 talented students from 14 area high schools together to bring the rousing tale of Jack Kelly set in turn-of-the-century New York City to life. This Broadway musical is based on the 1992 motion picture and inspired by the true story of the Newsboy Strike. Take a trip back in time and tap your toes along to the show-stopping musical numbers. Show dates are June 20th, 22nd, 27th, and 29th at 7.30 p.m. Matinee performance on Sunday, June 23rd and 30th at 2 p.m. Tickets can be purchased online at BDACT.org or at ReachX Food Pride or at the BDACT Fine Arts Center on Tuesday and Thursday from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. Student Rush tickets may be purchased for $8, 30 minutes before the show begins. Come watch this extremely talented group of young actors as they sing and dance the night away. Newsies at the Beaver Dam Area Community Theater. Just four spots remaining for the WBEV, WXRO, and travel leaders adventure in Ireland. Eight sensational days in September of this year. This is a totally customized tour. So whether you've been there before or if this is your first trip to the Emerald Isle, you'll be taking in the natural beauty, the history, and the culture of Ireland in comfortable September temperatures. For more information on our September 2019 trip to Ireland, visit our website, dailydodge.com, and click on WBEV, WXRO trips. 
Sunday, June 30th is your shot at $500. Sing your heart out for the one-day karaoke contest in the party yard at the Thirsty Beaver. Registration from noon until 1, and the contest goes until 4 p.m. This is a fan-voted contest, no judges, just you and the crowd. So bring all your friends to cheer you on. You must be 21 to compete. For all of the details, visit the contest page at dailydodge.com, brought to you by Hometown Glass and Improvement. Don't miss karaoke at the Thirsty Beaver Sunday, June 30th, where a singing beaver is a happy beaver. Think with a drink, WBEV WXRO Traveling Trivia wraps up Thursday, June 20th at the Children's Radiothon Bash at Bayside. Haven't been following our trivia contest? Don't worry. There will be tons of silent auction baskets, drink specials, bingo with cash payouts, food specials, and more. Come to Bayside to join in on all the fun Thursday, June 20th. Bingo at 4 p.m. Trivia registration at 5.30. Must be 21 to play trivia. Think with a drink is brought to you by The Boathouse, Morris Bar, The Hitching Post, Rock River Tap, The Thirsty Beaver, and Bayside Supper Club. The next WBEV WXRO broadcast will be Thursday, June 20th from 11 until 2 behind American Bank in Beaver Dam. Part of the 2019 Children's Radiothon. Come and get a Pernat Premium Brat, popcorn, and a soda for just $2. Then join us Tuesday, June 25th at Kirschbaum Strawberry Acres. But first, it's a brat, popcorn, and a soda for $2 behind American Bank in Beaver Dam. Friday, June 20th. For a full WBEV WXRO broadcast schedule, visit dailydodge.com. I get a car for the Amarillo, stays almost done. The other boys are even more before I have my fun. You remember writing these lyrics? Oh, yeah. Mm. Uh, it's, that's Tom Castillo. He is the singer, songwriter, and rhythm guitarist there from the band From which uh, came in fifth for the day at the 1967 Navy Pier uh, uh, International Battle of the, uh, the Bands. Uh, they printed 100 copies of uh, their original uh, record, uh, front side, A side, B side, um, and uh, recently reissued those. A, co uh, a collector came a call in, essentially, Alonis, uh, mm -hmm. Alonis Dreams Records, uh, and uh, reissued this record. So this record is something that people can get right now this 45 they can yeah so basically if you go to alona's dream records.com uh you'll you'll find it there and you can kind of scroll down their page and you'll see you know from and i think it's like 12 dollars or something like sure. that they'll mm -hmm. sell you for the original reissue with the all the little stuff that you know i showed a little bit earlier but um so yeah and uh, or if you want a digital download i think it's like Two ninety nine or something like that, okay. but you can download it or you can buy the uh, the collector's item, uh, which was kind of strange too, because my sister, when uh, we were at my my daughter's wedding, uh, just uh, two weeks ago. Congratulations, yes, by the way. Thank you. Yep, Sabrina and Danny. Uh, I wish you. Uh, they, they're just a great couple. Anyway, and it's my daughter. <laughs> um, but the um, so she, she googled up. Uh, Chase Me Up a Rhubarb Tree, which is one of the songs. 8 to 569 was the one That's I was just what playing. That's we just heard. Yeah. Uh, anyway, she Googled it up, and, and she's, uh, she goes, um, did you see this? <laughs> and, and so I said, uh, what? And then she shows me this, and, um, and it's, it's a, uh, and I, I screenshotted this. It says, uh, this item has been sold, Garage Rockabilly 45 from 8 to 569, Chase Me Up a Rhubarb Tree on Groovy. And it sold for $113.50. And so I, we dug a little bit uh, deeper. Uh, uh, this is the original. So this is one of a hundred. One of the hundred sold. And so uh, Michael Blaine and, and then Chris had some friends that were able to find out. So this was back in, uh, it was on, uh, on eBay for a week. It started out with a, uh, um, a original bid for ten dollars and then it sold for you know a hundred and thirteen dollars or fourteen dollars uh on june of 2014 five years ago wow and i had no idea about this i mean i would have sold my copies back then <laughs> but you know 
Uh, I don't know what it's worth now, but either way. Do you, you have know, Do you have copies now? I still have a copy. Yeah, a copy. A copy. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. And better you should hold on to that, and because that's what, as I understand it, collectors are looking for. Collectors are looking for not necessarily covers, but they are looking for those original songs from bands that maybe weren't the Rolling Stones. Right, and and that's the thing, you know. So, like I said, I didn't think too much of it, you know. So here's here's what's happened over this past, you know, couple months. This is this is Shindig Magazine. So Shindig Magazine, all right, is uh, uh, it's it's out of the uh, uh, UK, out of uh, England. And, you know, and again, it covers all of these things from the 60s. And so, you know, it's kind of like, okay, we ended up looking at this. And in this, in this magazine, they've got a, uh, a review of our, our record. And it was kind of like, um, wow. And it's got five stars. And there's a lot of four stars around here and a couple of five stars. But... Um, <laughs> If you don't, is it okay to read this? Well, yeah, well, yeah sure. Right. Well, so we're crediting the magazine, right? Oh yeah, you bet. Shindig, uh, you can get this. This is issue number ninety, and it's on sale now. You can pick it up at Barnes and Noble. Anyway, um, is that good for giving them? That a good, good okay. plug. Yeah. All right, good. Oh, uh, well, it says even back in the day, from Lone Edition, from's Lone Edition to the world of wild Chicago teen punk mayhem was considered pretty rare, being only issued in a tiny print run that's never been reinvestigated until now. Sometimes it can be all too easy to dismiss or overlook releases such as this, casually determining it as yet another loser effort from back in the midst of time. But dig this, from featuring Michael Blaine and Tom Castillo, pals since kindergarten, are generally different and have created a fabulously arresting, super intense example of garage psych genre. Guitars are cajoled, drums are pounded relentlessly, and the suggestive vocals are tossed down with an air of menace and urgency. (laughs) <laughs> okay, right. On <laughs> Chase Me Up a Rhubarb Tree, English slang for telling a person to beat it, apparently, the group offers even more primitive garage punk magic with enough pace and intensity to drive things along. And that uh, uh, was by Lenny Helsing, is the uh, guy that reviewed that. So, so you guys, are, you guys are, are stealing English slang for this? Well, yeah, you're, I did. You're, you're all American boys. Well, here's the story, all right? Here's how I wrote this. Uh, WLS had the, a thing they called the Silver Dollar Survey. So every week they would publish, you know, which were the, you know, top songs, and they'd show you where they were, and, you know, it's you know it's kind of you listen to Casey Kadem or something. You know, uh, you'd have, you know, the songs, and they were moving up or down the list. And so on the back of it then, back then they had this thing, you know, uh, they would put stuff on the back of the, of the survey. You pick this up at the record stores. And and it had this one here for English slang, and they had this thing here, chase me up a rhubarb tree, and and it was slang for get lost. <laughs> All right. So I mean, started thinking about it, and I ended up writing that song. Uh, Stealing it from uh, English songwriters, essentially. Well, yeah. Well, I mean, if they hadn't <laughs> thought about it, it was their fault, you right. know. But uh, <laughs> anyway, so I just uh, said, you know, so I'm saying, okay, well, we'll put that together, and then um, and the other one, eight to five, sixty nine, was. Uh, there's a lot of little uh, references to you know this, the culture of the time. So Batman and Get Smart, and uh, and you know and and I guess maybe the, all right. So eight to five, sixty nine was you know all right. So I'm sixteen years old. You know what a sixteen year old think about at that time. So anyway, that's uh, kind of what was going on in my head. So there. T- tell us about your songwriting process though back then. First of all, before you answer that, have you written songs since this era? I have gotten some lyrics I put down for Church for Praise songs okay. and things like that. All right. and, and so you've continued yeah, this kind of creative streak. a little streak. bit, but not, not as tell intense us, as I did. Tell us how 16-year-old Tom Castillo wrote a song. Um, I, well, no, yeah, that's a great question. Thank All right, you. so, yeah, you know, you're a great interviewer. Um, <laughs> so anyway, uh, I basically... Um, all right, so like I said, I went to a Catholic school, and we had to go to Mass every day and stuff like that. So I was sitting there in church, uh, and um, and so it chased me up a rhubarb tree, basically. I said, I'm sitting here contemplating, you know, so it's kind of like, you know, I wasn't meditating, I was contemplating. So anyway, that's that was kind of it. You know, you came up, and then, you know, you're looking for the rhyme. You know, I you know had a lot of uh, Dr. Seuss influence, I have to admit. 
Um, You're but scribbling this down on, on uh, pieces of paper in church? Well, How are you capturing it? Yeah, a lot of it was memory, you know, yeah. I, and then I'd go back and write write it down, and I, I think I may even have some of the original uh, papers. Oh, I hadn't thought about that. I wonder what that's worth. Anyway, oh. so um, one hundred thirteen dollars. Yeah, maybe. so you're 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 writing the lyrics. Are you all? Are you also coming up with the music? Are you bringing it to the band to, to help? I come came up with, the up music? with the, I came up with the music. So I would I would sit down there with the guitar and then come up with you know the uh, the chords. I, I'd say basically you know I would come up with the the chord progressions mm -hmm. first, and then uh, and then um, you know uh, an idea of a of a lick. You know, and an idea of the uh, bass. The one thing I've never been able to play, really, I have to admit, is drums. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, our our drummer was uh, incredible and uh, uh, is incredible still. And then uh, he has, um, and then the, there's some screams in the in there, and you see that in one of these reviews from uh, Ugly Things magazine. Uh, that um, you know, there's a screamer. You know, it's a fuzz pop screamer or something like that. But I I would sit down and and then. You know, kind of put it together and then take it over to the guys and say, hey, you know, what do we do with it? And and then they would help us and we'd all work together on the arrangement. And, and, uh, and, and you know, when we recorded, uh, I mentioned screaming, we recorded that. Uh, one of the things that we had a little problem with is Tom, Tom has uh, did the scream and uh, he, he's got very powerful lungs. And so, you know, we ended up having to, uh, he'd have to step away further from the microphone and maybe try it again and have to go further. Uh, and I think he was pretty much, maybe we had him on the other side of the door, <laughs> you know, uh, on the, you know, somewhere in the parking lot or something like that. But, I mean, you know, he was a great, great part in that, but it was fun. You, you have about a dozen original songs. You're the mm -hmm. primary songwriter. Mm -hmm. How does the band decide which two to select for this three hours in the expensive recording studio in 1967? Um, I guess it was more fan requests. Really? You know, because okay. basically when we were playing it in, you know, out uh, um, and out and about, basically people, you know, hey, yeah, you ought to record that, you ought to record that. So you got feedback from so the so audience. We got feedback, like and people said, yeah, go ahead and make a recording, and so we did. Um, and you know, so in 1967, that you know, uh, we're playing and things like that, and we played for a while. But I, uh, I started college in 1967, so September of 67, I'm off to college. We had all graduated from high school that that year, and you know, they, uh, Mike and Bruce and Tom, you know, were off to to work, and um, and you know, so that's really where the band ended. Is not because we didn't like each other. It wasn't one of those breakups like you hear about all the time. It was, it was, you know, it's time for us to move on. And uh, um, it, it's uh, there's a, a song by uh, Harry Chapin called Mr. Tanner. Mr. Tanner, you know, there's a, the refrain in there goes, you know, uh, music was his life. It was not his livelihood, you know. And that's kind of how I look at it too. For me, you know, I love music. I love playing it. I love listening to it. You know, I love talking about it. And uh, and so you know, it. Uh, Getting together again with these guys has been a, a a lot of fun. I mean, I could just talk about you know bands and people that I've met, uh, you know artists and and stuff like that. I could do that all day, but uh, but Michael and and Tom and, and Bruce and I just uh, you know we've always remained friends and uh, you know well you know we probably never be playing together again. But uh, certainly you know uh, this this whole ride has been kind of fun. Because you know now we have you know we've got this record that's out there, and people are looking at it. And I was just saying you know we got another review here from from Ugly Things magazine. Again, it's another one of those magazines there that covers things from the from the 60s, and um, you know, um, and it's just you know you <laughs> you take a look at this back back page there. You see the uh, one of the guitar players from the the debutantes. You know, double I neck mean, guitar, yeah, with yeah the, uh, the double, <laughs> the double neck guitar, and you know, and the short mini skirts and and things that they had back then. But you know, it was just uh, we had a lot of fun, and uh, and so all of a sudden, this is kind of like really strange that 50 years later, people want to hear this record. They're buying the record, they're collecting the original and paying big dollars for it. And uh, and personally, as far as I'm concerned, you know, I'm just happy to be able to say, hey, you know. We had some fun, and now people have heard it. And I, like I said, I didn't think too much of it back then. I think, okay, it was a lot of fun. We had a lot of fun. Great. You are, you are you surprised by it? Yeah, I am. Yeah, I am. I, I read these reviews, and I'm going, holy cow! <laughs> it was good. <laughs> they think it was good. Okay, well, did, all right. Did you feel it was good at the time? You know what? 
I probably think no, because I'm I'm very harsh critic of myself. You know, I you know uh, as as a as a surgeon, you know, one of the things that I learned from one of my uh, professors, a retinal surgeon, you know, he says, you know, you know, you always want to ask yourself when when you get a walk away from the operating table, what could I have done better? Mm. And so, you know, that's really, you know, you always kind of go, what could you have done better? I mean, it's like George Lucas and having to tweak Star Wars all the time. You know, it's you know, it's never finished. You know. It, so. You, you didn't tweak the original song though when you reissued it. That no. was that just went straight from the wh where was it sourced? Was it uh actually it was sourced off of one of the original uh 45s. Okay. So I had one of the original 45s. Michael had I think it was Michael's that we might have used. And so we took the original 45 and then we took that. Uh, the tapes actually the I have the original music tapes, the music tape, but I don't have the original mix with the vocals in it. Because there's a really strange story about that. What happened is there was a, a, a company called Talent Associates, and they came to Chicago and and they were you know saying, hey, you know, we'll we'll record your band and and uh, you know give us this much money and we'll be had we'll set it up and they had all sorts of things on their wall saying they had uh, they represented all these different record companies, Liberty and Mercury and you know all the the big ones, Decca, all the stuff of the of the time. And so we said, okay, but we said, well, we don't need to record anything. We already have this. So we gave them the tapes. And, uh, and, and then when we're trying to get a hold of these guys, you know, it was, you know, we always get busy signals or, you know, uh, when we did talk to them, we said, we'll get back to you, uh, you know, about when we record. And so one day, you know, um, we found, you know, we called them and the number was disconnected. Uh-oh. Yeah. So Tommy and I go down to, uh, uh, to the uh, offices. All right, and here's this stuff hanging on the door and things, and the lady in the office next door goes, uh, she, and we said, uh, what happened here? She says, yeah, it's the strangest thing, you know. Uh, they were here yesterday, and then in the middle of the night, they moved out. And, w and when is this? Uh, this is back in 1967. It's just cleared offices with yeah. a, basically with all your recording. With our recording and, and these other guys' money and so on and so forth. It was oh, a scam. The money, too. Exactly. So uh, it was a scam. We knew it was a scam ouch. then after that, and it was kind of, yeah, ouch. But it's a scam that has now lasted 50 years and has become kind of a, something of a one of those weird cultural things that people s seek out. Yeah. So, yeah, like I said, Alone is Dream Records, you can, dot, you know, dot com, you go there, you can get a this or if you're interested in playing. Well, what was that call like from Alana Streams? Who got it? What did they say Mike, to you? Michael uh, Blaine basically met uh, um, let me see who he met. Anyway, he met with Chris from Alona Streams Records and, and they started this work and I, he says, you know, they're interested in it and I said, you know, I said, well, let me check on the copyright. So I went and I have the copyrights. I actually had them in my uh, framed and kept them. So I had these here, uh, but anyway, I had the copyright. So I went and checked them out and, and wanted to see if it was still good. Now, there's been a lot of change in copyright laws over the years, especially in the 60s. And so I wanted to see if they were still good. And, and the answer was, yep, they still are. So I said, yeah, OK, fine. I can get permission for that. And, uh, and so uh, that started the process. And then we started writing the biographies and, and all the little other things that uh, you find in the, uh, the collector's uh, reissue. So, um, and so that that's really what happened. Uh, and and like I said, you know, and finally, uh, so that began probably um, last summer, and then and it came out uh, in in February. How many copies of the uh, original hundred do you think are out there? You sent them out to record companies and stuff like that. We Did you do we that? we actually went around with it. We took it to uh, to Mercury. I can remember going to Mercury Records. Uh, they had their offices right there on Wacker. Uh, drive in Chicago and took it down there, and the guy got to the screen and said, "That no, nah, that's okay." And then just that was the end of that. But then again, you know, I kind of think, you know, well, you know, <laughs> Decca turned down the Beatles, so <laughs> I figured, you know, they're lost. Yeah, your your tour may be imminent. You you never know. Yeah, Michael, Bruce, Tommy getting back together again. Yeah, yeah, we talk about that. Maybe we can open for the Eagles or something <laughs> like that. But you know, it's uh, you know, my, we're just kind of saying, you know, when we found this thing out about it selling for one hundred thirteen dollars, and saying, "Holy cow, we're collecting." I feel like Stretch <laughs> Armstrong, you know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that original Mad magazine, yeah. right? <laughs> something like that. Yeah. Uh, what did you, uh, looking back here now, fifty years, wh what do you, uh, what did you learn from that whole experience? You know what. Um, like I said, you know, uh, music is my life, not my livelihood. You know, I, you know, if somebody said, you know, you know, if you hadn't become a doctor, somebody asked us that question once. If I hadn't become a doctor, what would I have wanted been? I would like to have been a rock star. You know, that would have been a lot of fun. And then, you know what? I still am. 
you know, in, in regards to playing at church, I love playing at church. I have, you know, at, at Edgewood uh, get a chance to play the, the bass guitar or, you know, if they ask me to play piano or, or, or get a regular guitar, I do it. I've done that in the past, too. But, you know, it, you know, it's just uh, what I uh, play with a, uh, a rock band again. I have been blessed to be able to play uh, with Dr. Wilkins uh, group uh, local vocals uh, a couple of times there. And uh, so, uh, you know, he knows he can call on me anytime. And uh, so that's fun. We played out there at the Dodge County Fair, you know, on the uh, radio stage there for WDEV 1430 uh, and, um, and uh, WXRO 95.3. So basically, Good plugs. yes, you, you betcha. <laughs> I know how to do this stuff. <laughs> we have a lot of fun. Uh, what, uh, uh, w would you play together again with, if, with the guys if, uh, if the opportunity were there? If the opportunity were there, I would. I would, you know, uh, but, you know, we've all kind of moved on, you know, to, to different things, and, you know, so I don't know, um, I know Tommy Glover said he has his uh, couple of sets of drums that are kind of stored away, and uh, and me, I'm, you know, I've got drums, you know, I, you know, but again, you know, he's living in California, Michael and Bruce are in Chicago, I'm up here in Wisconsin, loving Wisconsin, though, I mean, it, it really is great, matter of fact, I mean, you know, most people, when they get retired, they leave Chicago and move to Wisconsin. Right. We're already here. Yes, exactly. <laughs> well, uh, Alanis Dreams Records. Uh, that's alanisdreams.com? A-L-O-N-A-S-D-R-E-A-M. -A -A uh, Alanis Dream uh, Records, yeah. Okay. And that's uh, uh, available in digital format. You can get the actual vinyl from it. Mm -hmm. I do believe we're going to uh, play out with... Uh, uh, I think this is your uh, rhubarb tree song, Chase mm -hmm. Me Up a Rhubarb Tree, mm -hmm. uh, uh, as, a, as a way to go out. Um, what, do, what do you want our listeners, we've talked a little bit about the nuts and bolts of this song. Uh, they're they're going to hear this song here in its entirety. Um, what do you, uh, what goes through your mind when you hear this song? <laughs> what goes through my mind when I hear this song? I just, uh, I, th I think about my mom. My mom was there at the, uh, um, at the uh, record release, and my mm -hmm. sister were there. You know, I actually got a picture with her there. But uh, I, uh, what I think about is is how she really liked it, and and my parents, my dad. You know, I have to say, I mean, you know, without their support and love, you know, we couldn't have done any of this stuff. You know, my uh, I bought the that Box Continental Oregon, uh, and that was the very first thing I ended up buying on credit going down to the Continental wow. Bank, my dad co-signing and stuff <laughs> like that. So I got my credit ratings and stuff like that. But, wow. I mean, you know, uh, guitars. The guitar uh, I got for my high school graduation uh, early. Uh, so <laughs> that Rickenbacker, you know, was my high school graduation. I have a Les Paul that my uh, my dad gave me as well. And, and so, you know, it, there's just special things. So, you know, when I think back, to these things, I can think of you know uh, my bandmates, and I can think about um, the um, uh, you know I can think about my parents and my brother. My brother was uh, an incredible drummer as well, and and there was a band on every you know uh, every block in Chicago basically, mm -hmm. and then we had you know two of my brother's uh, group, uh, Your Doctor's Orange. Uh, is uh, ironically uh, titled mm -hmm. uh, here in retrospect now. Yeah. Music, I mean, it really is that uh, that 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 thing that brings us closer together as a as a culture. Yeah, you're right. You know what? And that's something interesting. You know, uh, my brother had passed away from multiple myeloma about 10 years ago. But uh, at his uh, memorial service, I mean, his the church was filled to overflowing. I mean, there were people out there. And one of the things that my brother had said to me, you know, before he passed away was that, you know, music had been very good to him. It, it just brought him a lot of friends wow. and things like that. And I think that's true. You know, music does bring pe people together. I remember seeing Michael Jackson. Uh, perform at in the uh, sh uh, Comiskey Park, wow. you know, and the crowd there was just incredible. Everybody was, I mean, you know, there was no division, mm -hmm. you know, everybody was uh, brought together, and I think that's one of the things that Michael Jackson really did. He managed to bring people together, you know, of all races and colors and uh, and and religions and stuff like that, because music does does bind us together. And I read one time too that you know. Uh, you know, God created music so that we could uh, sing without words, and so basically praise without words is what we do. That's a great note to leave on here. It's been wonderful having you on this uh, this program. We're going to leave again with Chase You Up, the Rhubarb Tree, I believe, uh, written by Tom Castillo, sung by Tom Castillo with rhythm guitar by Tom Castillo, Michael Blaine on bass, Tommy Glover, the drummer, and on the, uh, the Fender Strat, 
Uh, you've got uh, Bruce, uh, is it Baltus? Bruce Baltus, Bru yeah. Bruce Baltus. Here it is uh, on uh, AM 1430 WBEV. Uh, this uh, this wonderful uh, uh, song that's uh, uh, now over 50 years old. We do have another segment I want to invite you. We've got the folks from the Dodge County Historical Society coming up here after this, but uh, your opportunity. I believe this would be the, is this the Beaver Dam debut of this song, other than the little snippet we heard just a little bit ago? I think yeah, uh, right. you may you guys may have played it already, too. I hope so. Either way, yeah, well, chase, chase me up a rhubarb tree. It's, is. it's the first time we've played this uh, this week. Uh, then we'll say <laughs> here on AM 1430 WBEV. Doctor, it's been great sitting down with you. Thank you, Craig. Chase me up a rhubarb tree. Dr. Tom Castillo and the boys from From. <laughs> Help raise $4,500 for the Children's Radiothon. How? Just Golf Box Lake Golf Club, Wednesday, June 19th, anytime from 6A to 8B. And the price is crazy. 18 holes of the cart for only $25. And from that, a $15 green fee will be donated to the Children's Radiothon. If all tee times are filled, that's $4,500 for the kids of Dodge County, plus great food and drink specials and even radio celebrities. Call Fox Lake Golf Club for tee times at 920-928-2508. Come enjoy the Tony Award-winning Broadway musical Newsies at the Beaver Dam Area Community Theater. This summer's high school age musical brought over 60 talented students from 14 area high schools together to bring the rousing tale of Jack Kelly set in turn-of-the-century New York City to life. This Broadway musical is based on the 1992 motion picture and inspired by the true story of the Newsboy Strike. Take a trip back in time and tap your toes along to the show-stopping musical numbers. Show dates are June 20th, 22nd, 27th, and 29th at 7.30 p.m. Matinee performance on Sunday, June 23rd and 30th at 2 p.m. 
Tickets can be purchased online at BDACT.org or at Rechecks Food Pride or at the BDACT Fine Arts Center on Tuesday and Thursday from 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. Student Rush tickets may be purchased for $8, 30 minutes before the show begins. Come watch this extremely talented group of young actors as they sing and dance the night away. Newsies at the Beaver Dam Area Community Theater. Just four spots remaining for the WBEV WXRO and travel leaders adventure in Ireland. Eight sensational days in September of this year. This is a totally customized tour. So whether you've been there before or if this is your first trip to the Emerald Isle, you'll be taking in the natural beauty, the history, the culture of Ireland in comfortable September temperatures. For more information on our September 2019 trip to Ireland, visit our website, dailydodge.com, and click on WBEV WXRO trips. Sunday, June 30th is your shot at $500. Sing your heart out for the one-day karaoke contest in the party yard at the Thirsty Beaver. Registration from noon until 1, and the contest goes until 4 p.m. This is a fan-voted contest, no judges, just you and the crowd. So bring all your friends to cheer you on. You must be 21 to compete. For all of the details, visit the contest page at dailydodge.com, brought to you by Hometown Glass and Improvement. Don't miss karaoke at the Thirsty Beaver, Sunday, June 30th, where a singing beaver is a happy beaver. Think with a drink, WBEV WXRO Traveling Trivia wraps up Thursday, June 20th at the Children's Radiothon Bash at Bayside. Haven't been following our trivia contest? Don't worry. There will be tons of silent auction baskets, drink specials, bingo with cash payouts, food specials, and more. Come to Bayside to join in on all the fun Thursday, June 20th. Bingo at 4 p.m., trivia registration at 5.30. Must be 21 to play trivia. Think with a drink is brought to you by The Boathouse, Moore's Bar, The Hitching Post, Rock River Tap, The Thirsty Beaver, and Bayside Supper Club. Here's a look at your weatherology forecast. Cloudy skies expected this afternoon with a chance for scattered storms. Daytime highs approaching 74. Winds out of the southwest 5 to 10 miles per hour. Chance for scattered storms tonight. Lows dip down to about 55. Overcast skies. Cloudy skies tomorrow. Chance for scattered thunderstorms. Daytime highs approaching 65. I'm meteorologist Jennifer Wojcicki on your hometown station AM 1430 WBEV. Currently it's 73. 139 from AM 1430 WBEV, streaming online at dailydodge.com. Time for more of today's community comment. Here again is your host, Craig Warmbold. Well, thank you very back, and uh, thank you, thank you very much, and welcome back to uh, Community Comment. Our uh, guest on this segment, we're kind of keeping the historical theme going. Our uh, guest is the uh, president of the Dodge County Historical Society Board of Directors, Pat Lutz, here with us. Thank you so much for joining us today. Well, great to be here, and I really appreciate the support we've gotten from uh, WBEV and Good Karma over all these years, and. Uh, we have a good relationship. Well, we love having you guys on because, I mean, you guys are essentially the memory of Dodge County. Well, as we say, history is made every day, and uh, so there's, we talk about it all the time. We think, you know, we have all these wonderful collections, and we figure we'll never get anything really that interesting anymore, and then somebody walks in with some a box full of memorabilia that's just full of interesting things and we stop everything and we look through it and we end up not getting much accomplished that day when we, we are looking through artifacts that uh, we never thought we'd ever see. Well, if you uh, get a, a 45 from the band From uh, <laughs> with uh, Chase Me Up the Rhubarb Tree on it, uh, you might want to set it aside. It's worth about $118, it okay. looks like, from those All original right. printings. Right. Uh, the, uh, uh, one of the things that we – and we're going to talk about what's new at the museum here in just a few minutes and some of the future projects that you've got going on. But first, we want to let our listeners know about uh, the big lawn party you guys got going on this week. Yeah, we have the lawn party every year. We've had it for at least 20 years. Wow. And uh, the lawn party, we, what we do is we try to highlight, of course, the museum. But it, we also have tours, downtown uh, city tours at the same time. But we have entertainment. Uh, we have Novice and Carney playing and a wonderful duo that plays just about every kind of music you can think of. And that'll be under the big trees in front of the museum. And uh, we'll have benches for people to sit on as well. And, and then one of our favorites, uh, and everybody else's favorite as well, is we have free root beer floats. Every year we do that. It's been, a, been our tradition. Activities for kids. Uh, we have a couple of uh, big trunks that we found in the basement uh, that used to be uh, part of a project, an outreach project for the schools. And what happened is that we would take these trunks to the different schools. And they were filled with interesting artifacts and uh, old hats and, and uh, different things from early times, even going back to 18, the 1800s, early uh, memorabilia from 
the early settlers. And uh, these are things that you can pick up and handle. And uh, the kids then would try the things on and, and uh, try some of the old equipment that, that was included in these boxes. And uh, we had them stored in the basement and kind of forgot about them. And we found them as we were doing some cleaning a couple of weeks ago. And we'll have those for the kids to dig through. And I think they'll have a lot of fun. Wow, that's awesome. Uh, and, and this is really an opportunity for folks to also see this jewel that we've got here in the community, the Dodge County Historical Society and the old Williams Free Library. Absolutely. And that's one of the things I really wanted to talk about is one of our new projects. Each year we have a... Uh, a special project, and uh, this year in particular was to learn more about our building. Cool. And uh, the building was, was started in, in 1889 and finished in 1890. And the Williams Free Library, Mr. Williams was a business person from uh, Beaver Dam and uh, was involved with one of the banks. Uh, quite a quite a, an entrepreneur in, in his own right, but also he was a, a person who would give back to the community. Mm -hmm. And he donated... Uh, about twenty thousand dollars to build the the building, and it's amazing when you think about that building. It's such a landmark in a, in our community, and so we started doing research uh, on the building itself and uh, learned a lot more about it than we ever thought we would. Hmm. Um, the Holy Grail still is the original plans of the building. There are a number of different. Uh, changes that occurred over the years huh. but uh, we still are looking for the original plans and supposedly they have a copy at, uh, in Milwaukee uh, the library system there has uh, some of the plans from uh, the original architectural firm and that was the mix uh, architectural firm from Milwaukee they were the architects and then uh, Mr. Holbrook who they sent as their agent uh, he drew up some of the original plans but uh, the Milwaukee library supposedly has the plans and we're still trying to uh, find those but uh, mm -hmm. we have found plans uh, for different additions after the building was built they really didn't do a lot to it until the 1950s and then at that time they did some major renovations and we have those plans which we just found recently and we were thrilled because it get, does it still give us an idea of what some of the things look like uh, when the building was first constructed uh, one of the neat things I think is uh, as they're looking at the building and I look at it all the time and I'm just amazed at the, the structure itself is uh, the stonework on the outside. Uh, yeah. I Striking. Mean, it's amazing and, and you think about it, at that time it had to be one of the biggest buildings in South Central Wisconsin at that time and one of the most intricate and the rich Richardsonian uh, uh, architecture at the time is, it certainly stood out from any other building in the community at that time. Uh, the stone, some of it came from Wauwatosa, mm. and uh, the superstructure of the building, it was a sandstone that came all the way from Ohio. Mm. So you can imagine then as they put in the foundation and then train, trains would come through the city and drop off all the stone, and we have some pictures of piles of stone piled up along the railroad tracks, and uh, of course the railroad tracks came into town, it was called the frying pan or the industrial loop, and uh, so we had the lawn or the area around the building, you know, piled up with all this stone. Interesting that you've been in this building now, uh, low these many decades now. Well, since and, 1985. And, uh, and, and you're still finding out new information new about information, your, your right. house, right. essentially. Right, absolutely. And it is our home, and we really consider it uh, Beaver Dam's home and as the library for all the years. And there are still people that come in and say, we thought this was the library, <laughs> and uh, people who haven't visited the community for a long time. But we also have families that come back where they maybe had, uh, they went to school here and then uh, went off to other cities and come back, and they're just thrilled to be in that building, and they remember all the, the different areas of the library, the children's sure. library upstairs, and uh, where they sat and where they studied and that type of thing. And, and now it's a historical retrospective for those Absolutely who may right. have been in some of those old school buildings or, mm -hmm. you know, you've got military uh, historical right. artifacts. I mean, the, the, the range of history uh, really is, is quite rich at the, the Dodge it, County It's been exciting Society. over the years. When we first moved in in 85, it was pretty much just uh, the first floor. And then over the years, we've we've spread out to all parts of the building, and uh, that kind of leads me into something else. Is uh, we're talking about new things at the museum. We are preparing a new exhibit. It was the boardroom in the basement for the historical society, and uh, it's over the years that it ended up uh, being a, a storeroom as we moved the board members upstairs for our our monthly meetings, and we decided this room is too nice to just you know use as a storage area. So we cleaned it out, and it's now going to be 
uh, area called Made in Beaver Dam. Huh. So we're not thinking about I industrial products, but uh, we're thinking about things that people made uh, where they spent uh, many hours constructing it. And I'll give you an example of one of them. We have a miniature circus that a man put together with, you know, the big top and the side shows and uh, small uh, animal cages and wagons. And uh, I would say if you think about a, a four by eight sheet of plywood, it fits on a, a surface about that big. Original work. Original work, right. And so we're going to huh. turn that room into uh, an area that will hold things like that that people have made. And not just limited to art? Not to art, right. We have art that will be hung on the walls, but we have things that people have made. Uh, we have a, a young man made a huge totem pole for his Eagle Scout project back in the 1950s. Wow. And we have documentation huh. on many of the things, pictures and articles about it. And there was a man who <laughs> made uh, small carriages, uh, miniature carriages, and and ships and so we have all these things and we and and as, as we uh, started looking at the museum over the years some of these things just didn't quite fit into our collections and we had all these things stored and we said you know we really need to put these things on display because it really is part of our history and people have avocations just as they have vocations and uh, it's nice to be able to highlight those and will folks be able to see this new exhibit on saturday during the lawn party this one is uh, not going to be available okay. until the fall until the fall so right. something to look forward right. to here but, but we do have some interesting things coming up uh, kurt sampson our curator has put together a fantastic display over the years of uh, ancient artifacts uh, he's an archaeologist and has uh, collected things uh, throughout Dodge County, but uh, we're bringing in some uh, pieces from the uh, Milwaukee County Museum that came from Dodge County and that are actually prehistoric. Mm -hmm. And we're putting together this display, and I'm sure Kurt's going to be coming on in the future and talking uh, about it. We I have a wait. reception, yeah. uh, but it's just amazing uh, some of the things that were collected uh, throughout Dodge County and the going back all the way to the late uh, 1800s and up into the 1960s, and uh, many of these things were you know, part of Dodge County history, but uh, they were stored at the Milwaukee County Museum, and they're wow. lending us some of these artifacts. Yeah. And, and Kurt is such a wealth of, of knowledge Absolutely. when it comes to prehistory, to Native American right, history, right. And, uh, the burial mounds, uh, just a, a, a brilliant mind when it comes and in. Fascinating sure, storyteller. Sure. I, I, he called me up this morning, and he said, now be sure to tell him, <laughs> and I, I could uh, spend half an hour just t t mentioning all the things that he mentioned, and I just think people should uh, stop in and uh, see some of the things we have now. Mm -hmm. We had to jump through a lot of hoops to get these uh, uh -huh. artifacts, and uh, slowly we'll be incorporating those into an exhibit that uh, everybody will be able to see. So you will be able to see some of that then some this of that Saturday will be during the lawn party. Saturday, well, what right. are the hours of the lawn party again? The, the lawn party uh, officially is from 12 to 4, but uh, that tour, as I mentioned, will be at 10 o'clock and another one at... Uh, one thirty. Okay. Now that tour is the, is kind of a mural themed tour, right? Uh, um, Ken Thomas is involved with uh, uh, the downtown association, and uh, he suggested that, uh, and he's also a board member as well. But he suggested w if we could murals into this year's tour, and I've done the, this downtown walking tour on a number of occasions, and it's a perfect perfect complement to the tour that I've done. And what I'm going to do is talk mainly about the murals. We'll walk to each one in the downtown area and kind of fill in some history uh, in between. Mm. So talk about some of the buildings and some of the history as we go from one uh, mural to the next. Yeah. But uh, it, that was an amazing project. Yeah. You think about that. It was just two years ago that the Wall Dogs were here. <laughs> and wow, it's uh, been two years two already. Two years already, <laughs> right. And it was wonderful to see that whole process take place. Well, tell us about maybe one of the pieces that you're going to talk about and give us uh, some insight into what you might say okay, about it. Okay, one of my favorites is the Ray Galoon uh, mural. and Ray, I think that's my favorite, too. Yeah, Ray yeah. Galoon was quite an interesting person and someone that I had never even heard of before hmm. I came to Beaver Dam and really hadn't really paid much attention to him at all until they started doing research uh, for the mural. Mm -hmm. uh, he was born in Beaver Dam in 1911, uh, spent... Uh, his early years here went to high school uh, in Beaver Dam and then went to the University of Wisconsin. Spent one year there and then quit and moved on and uh, actually served in World War II. Spent a lot of time in, in Europe, uh, but what a prolific writer. He is considered to be one of the fathers of uh, modern science fiction. And uh, he did a lot of his work in the 
20s and 30s, but it was writing all the way up until the 1970s. Wow. Um, again, most people, if you mention his name in Beaver Dam, they'll say, who? Who are you talking about? But uh, I purchased a book on eBay, and it was the best of Ray Galoon, and I'm really not a big science fiction person, but I really enjoyed the stories in, in uh, this this book that he put together. Well, we're on video now. You can probably you can hold the book right, up to the, the, the book camera here. The, the best the of best uh, Ray Galoon. Of, best of Ray Galoon, and he literally wrote hundreds of stories. Uh, many of them were for the Pulp Fiction books mm -hmm. available at the time. They certainly, uh, I think, people are familiar with the ones dealing with uh, mysteries mm -hmm. and. But the, uh, there is a whole series that was de uh, devoted to science fiction. And uh, do you talk about the? Uh, um the mural itself in terms of some of the uh, decisions that were made and what's featured right, in those murals? Right. Uh, one of the neat things about Ray Galoon is he was so forward thinking. I mean, he, he could really put together a great story. And one of the things he's credited for is giving some positive aspects to these, say, creatures from outer space <laughs> or beings from outer space. Um, that was, I think, one of the highlights is, is that he would look at them not as beings that were going to come to the earth and eat everybody or destroy civilization, but uh, that they were interested in us just as much as we were interested in them. And so he, he gave them some... Um, Humanity. Uh, you're right, exactly. That's the perfect word for it. And that they were just, like I said, interested in us and, and they wanted to learn about us. And uh, one of the stories uh, um, that uh, is in this book that I really enjoyed is one of the very first ones. <laughs> And it was called Old Faithful. Old Faithful is about a person, a creature or object or being, whatever you want to call it, that from Mars. So here we are talking about the 1930s, and again, people really weren't quite sure what was on Mars, and uh, possibly thought that there were people living there. And so this inspired him to write this book, and it was about uh, a person who, this creature, being uh, from Mars was uh, saw a signal from Earth. So at that time, uh, they were uh, shining the light out into the outer space and a blinking light, a powerful light, and now it's all done uh, electronically and sending signals into space. But back at that time, uh, they did it with a bright light, and uh, so this being on Mars kind of tuned into this because uh, he had a telescope and uh, started figuring out, okay, what are they trying to say? So he couldn't communicate with them, but he learned, tried to figure it out, and finally came up with the idea that it was some kind of code. And so he learned Morse code and then started signaling back to them. And he ended up then uh, sending a signal saying, I'm, I'm coming to Earth. And they said, oh my gosh, you know, what are we going to do? You know, is if you know, we're inviting this person, uh, are we inviting uh, the end of the world, that kind of thing? And uh, so what he did, uh, this being from Mars is uh, uh, hitchhiked on an asteroid that went past uh, past Earth, and then his craft crashed on Earth, and these people uh, found it, and uh, and so that was the end of the story then, because uh, then you it was left to your imagination what would happen then to uh, to this being and. Uh, what a fertile mind. And, right, uh, right. An that, interesting and that, idea. It, right. Jumping um, aboard an asteroid. A, a, a good person uh, <laughs> that uh, I, I think just pra praised him was Arthur Clarke, who wrote wow. 2001. Sure. And he's, an, he's one of the people that said, you know, that Ray Galoon was somebody who provided the foundation for modern science fiction today. And Beaver Dam uh, native, in, in one of the coolest looking murals too, I mm -hmm. think, in, in the uh, the whole city with the spaceman. Is that supposed to be Ray Galoon? The, uh, well, the I'm not sure about that. It's probably from something from that was inspired by sure. one of his books. <laughs> uh, so that is uh, uh, one portion of the lawn party again, 12 to 4, over literally on the front lawn under the uh, the, the beautiful canopy trees Absolutely. with the, uh, the, the fountain the right fountain. up front there. Uh, 12 to 4, free root beer floats, 10 a.m. and 1.30 for the for mural the tours. tours. And they are walking tours, and mm -hmm. it take about an hour. Okay, about an hour, so mm -hmm. you want to reserve for that. Um, it, 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 do you have a rain date or anything like that? No, uh, God forbid. That's it. We'll, we'll, right. just, we'll just move indoors. Bring and your umbrellas. And, uh, right. If we're, we're still going to do the tours, I'll have my own big umbrella. Excellent. Very good.
Uh, so what uh, what's coming up in the future over at the uh, at the Historical Society? Well, we always have something in, uh, planned. As I was mentioning earlier about our special room made in Beaver Dam, we're excited about that because we've had all these things stored away that mm -hmm. we just didn't know what to do with them. And, and so we came up with this idea, and we're using a famous room in the basement that was actually funded by Mary Swan, one of our wonderful historic persons from, from the city of, of Beaver Dam and certainly the whole Swan family. But uh, um, we have that, and then also the, uh, the artifacts. Uh, we'll, when we put that whole display together, we'll have a uh, reception that uh, will have invite the entire community to come and see those because, to me, I, I'm just fascinated by that, to think about pre prehistoric times. And, and also to think about just Beaver Dam in general mm -hmm. when people first came here in the 1840s. Yeah. It's changed quite a bit, Twa quite over, a bit the, uh, right. over the years. Right. Uh, again, all of this in the uh, uh, Dodge County Historical Society <coughs> Museum, excuse me, uh, the, uh, once the Williams Free Library. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, the, uh, the, the first uh, free stack yeah, library? It was, one of the, it was one of the first. It wasn't the first one, um, but it was one of the very first. One of the very, very first, first in the country. Free libraries. In the country, in right. The country. Yeah, because before that, uh, you had to walk up to a reception desk and say, mm -hmm. You know, I'd like to look at this book. And now, you know, in any library, basically in the United States, you just wander around through the stacks and find the book that you're looking for. Patrons encouraged over at the Historical Society. Absolutely. Yeah. Uh, right. Maybe you could uh, you could sign up and become a patron member if you're Absolutely not only one uh, right. this Saturday. Right. Yeah. We have the brochures there, and uh, we'd love to have more patron members. And uh, the the museum is open uh, Wednesday through Saturday from. Uh, one to four, and uh, we have people that come to the mu museum for many different reasons. Some for genealogy, some just returning to Beaver Dam after being gone for many years, and and we get calls all the time where they find pictures on uh, eBay or they find pictures in old newspapers, and they're wondering where these buildings were and mm. how they were connected to the history of Beaver Dam. Yeah, uh, again, the the memory of uh, of Beaver Dam all housed in the Dodge County in Historical Society place. Museum. And an opportunity to celebrate that with the lawn party this Saturday, noon to 4, uh, with that uh, walking tour again at 10 a.m. and 1.30. It's about an hour long. Uh, Pat, why don't you tell our listeners why they should uh, make it a point to be part of this opportunity? Well, I, I think the main thing is our, that building is such an iconic structure in Beaver Dam. People drive by it. Probably most people drive by it at least once a day. And what's housed there is just amazing uh, with our one-room schoolhouse uh, project, our military displays, our displays in the basement of, of business in Beaver Dam, uh, famous people from Beaver Dam as well. That's an area where people look at it all the time and just amazed at uh, the number of famous people that have called Beaver Dam home. Yeah, uh, Maddie Horn, Fred McMurray, Fred Ray, McMurray Galoon. Ray Galoon. The list goes right. on. It goes on. Uh, it, well, I want to thank you very much for uh, giving us all the details here on community comment today, and uh, we we'll look forward to uh, you know a great opportunity to sip some free root beer floats under the uh, canopy of the Dodge County Historical Society Museum lawn this Saturday. Right, and uh, again, we appreciate all the support from WBV, and thank you, Craig. Anytime. Uh, th with the, uh, the the memory banks of, uh, of Beaver Dam, uh, Pat Lutz, he is the president of the Dodge County Historical Society Board of Directors. Uh, more information on your website. Absolutely. DodgeCountyHistoricalSociety.com or DHS.com, uh, if I'm not mm -hmm. mistaken. Uh, so uh, you can uh, find out the facts there that you need to collect. I uh, want to thank our uh, previous guests as well. Uh, Dr. Tom Castillo, uh, who uh, told us a, a great historical st uh, story about uh, his 1967 rock band that's uh, now being uh, uh, having their original single reissued from. Uh, you can check that out again at um, uh, Lanis Dream Records. Uh, you can download that uh, digital copy or, or order the, uh, the vinyl 45. AlanisRecords.com. Again, thanks to Pat Lutz and Tom Castillo. That is going to do it for today's community comment. 1430 WBEV Beaver Dam. Here's ABC News in progress. The Pentagon is authorizing a thousand more troops to the Middle East following oil tanker attacks and Iranian threats to ramp up nuclear. Republican Senator John Cornyn says he stands with the White House. I support the president's uh, um, maximum pressure campaign, and what we need to do is get uh, Europe to realize that uh, Iran is.